So, I found some worthy stuff I'm going to share with you. Things just to keep in mind uh, during this time period of the increased darkness and to uh, focus on the light, which is the true meaning of the season. Recognizing the Christ light within you. Get yourself a cup of something. We're going to talk. I'm in the stick eater. And Donnie, the Boston Terrier. that we're here on this planet. Uh, there is a divine purpose and to uh, live it. And to do that is a discipline of listening within. There's a dog, there's another dog, there's a ball. And I'm trying to get that ball from that dog so I can throw it. <laughs> I've been thinking about um, creating some positivity in my life. So today I gave myself permission to stretch in bed and call it exercise. Oh. I have to be faster. Yesterday I had it down pat. There we go. <laughs> He's gonna get that one. It's way over yonder. It's over there. No, it's that way. It's that way. So more positivity is, is being called for. Um, I've come out of a big, big, huge awakening in my life. And that was the falsity of how I was raised by a mother who basically was unfit to be a mother. Sadly, there seems to be a lot of people like that, that have children and yet mistreat them and then set them up for difficulties and challenges in life that wouldn't otherwise be there, as well as a mindset. So learning self-acceptance. I, I remember, it was so funny because I said it to my narcissist uh, partner. I said, Narcissism is something that is a very popular word du jour. It dilutes the very real reality of pathological narcissism and narcissistic abuse. And by God, we're gonna identify these creatures so that the good people of this planet can separate themselves from them so that they can self-destruct and die off. It's possible. Now the truth is, the pathological narcissists actually hate themselves and their loathing is so great that they can't stand love and they hate themselves so much that if you love them as an innocent person, they hate you for loving them because since they are seriously flawed in their minds, if you love them, you've got a problem. A narcissist has to have conflict and confrontation to feel alive. A pathological narcissist, that is. Self-love is healthy because a pathological narcissist's problem is that they have a deep self-loathing for themselves. And because it is so catastrophic for them, they project it out to you, okay? Right now, let's just talk about what they need. Control, fuel, character traits, and residual benefits. Control over you. Period. I said to him, you know, do you love yourself? And he paused and then he goes, yeah. I go, well, it's, it's taken me a lifetime to learn how to love myself. Well, the truth is he never really did love himself. He hated himself. Uh, that opposite of narcissism is actually that they hate themselves. Well, <laughs> I recently thought about it and I thought to myself, There are people who have been through difficulties and they end up healing. And then there are people who have been through difficulties and they end up breaking forever. And I'm discovering that no matter what, and no matter how much I may love a person who has gone through difficulties, 
it's possible that that person may never, ever, ever heal. And they, and any um, time in which you, the unattending, offending party, says something that puts the least bit of uh, shade or shadow on their self-concept, they go ballistic. Any, any perception of them as being, I see the ball. Any perception of them as being um, less than perfect is met with hostility, like death, uh, deathly scary hostility, hostile hostility. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go in here and get the ball where we can. The joys in life. I just have to watch out that I don't step in any coop. So I'm watching the ground. Meanwhile, oh, there's some old poop right there. Got it. So that's really that, that that took me for a loop because there were some things I think that I had counted on. I had I had in a way counted on my mother always being there for me. And now I know 100% she's an adversary. And I love who she tried to be, but um, I don't have a whole lot of fond memories of her. Manip it's like weird, it's so weird to look back at it. Good job. Yeah, so just coming to terms with how I feel about that. Knowing I can't speak to her, I can't actually have a conversation. But I'll just send letters and just say things that are vague and ambiguous. And just say how grateful I am for the things I have received. I'm, I'm transparent about that. And, uh... But here we go, you know, fa let's face it, my parents are gonna die or get increasingly more senile. And in either event, I've lost my parents, but the question I have is, was I ever close to either one of them? Did either one of them really know me? Did either one of them ever have a conversation with me? And the answer is no. So some of you might have actually had a uh, healthy, happy childhood with a parent that you miss greatly. I just, I don't, I wouldn't miss my parents because there's nothing to miss except for the safety net of, I still have parents who are alive. But there are no guarantees, especially with them. So that's what I've come to face. It's like, wow, all this time I thought for sure my parents had my best interest in mind and boy, was I wrong. That's all. It's just sort of like, huh, okay. Well, they're very selfish and they always have been. But they told us they loved us, but acting differently. And that's where I saw that uh, problem I had with men is what they said was different than what they did. And that's where I realized that was my programming, my negative programming. So I, re I remember saying to somebody, men, um, look at only at actions and not at words. And yet even those actions I misunderstood. I thought having sex with me meant a man loved me. It doesn't. So I was like, his actions speak for him. No, no. <laughs> now your delusion colors you, the way you perceive little cat. Meow, meow. Cat's out of the bag. No regrets. No regrets. No regrets at all. Um, just that life is, uh, ta is taking on a different meaning. It's taking on a, uh, 
it's like it's sort of like okay everybody's everybody's life is like we've all got a good book in us right so i now am considering life in a different way i just see it differently now and it makes me feel vulnerable but also excited <laughs> Uh, it makes me feel raw. It makes me feel like, wow, it took me until almost six zero chronologically to, to really feel this deeply into um, myself. And, and to enjoy having a body. I enjoy having a body. My body is getting hot. Let me take off my jacket. And I'm also sitting on those things, and they're hard. Those are sharp little things. So I, I was realizing that a lot, of, a lot of times I'll be in my head. I'll just be all in my head. And then I'll slowly be like, feel my body again. And I'll, that's when I'll notice how not in my body I can be at times. Just not in my body. And then when I get back into my body, I will just, you know, stretch. And I put that idea across of like doing exercise videos. <laughs> don't know what I'm going to do with my talents. <laughs> um, so today I gave myself permission to stretch in bed and call it exercise. I have a lot of things I've written down that are positive. I think I might expouse, expound upon those that we're here on this planet. Uh, there is a divine purpose and to uh, live it and to do that is a discipline of listening within. Now you can see. And shutting out the background noise, such as you hear in this neighborhood, somebody making some mechanism go. But to shut out that background music, music voice in your head that is constantly correcting you like I've had that and that's that programming again because I was harangued my entire childhood and it continued into my adulthood that voice and we all have it and I remember identifying it as the VOJ or the voice of judgment and that comes from some book I read, I think Stanford uh, University's Business School. And uh, I um, started becoming aware that we all have that um, defeatist within, the inner defeatist. And that, I think, is a negative program we all have. It's a mind virus. And then we have the thing that connects us to our hearts and to the divine spark of our creator. Like we're plugged in. I mean, that's why, okay, a man and a female together, if they love each other, their sex together creates, it generates a battery that plugs in to the, the great, um, divine. Uh, my expression is that's why they say, oh God. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, because uh, an orgasm is so incredible. There goes the Amtrak. You hear it? I know uh, one of the engineers, JD, he dresses up like Santa Claus. He's my age um, as well, but he just looks much older, so 
I have to get I, I used to the idea that um, my future lover is gonna be an old man already <laughs> unless I unless I get a younger guy but I, I just right now am in a place of not equipped for a relationship because I'm having one with myself and then just integrating these things that I've learned about life and my desire to apply myself appropriately and yet knowing that I've spun my wheel, I've gone off in different directions and out of sheer will have made it work and now I want to stop doing that to align my will with divine will and make that real rather than making what I want to have happen happen. So my intention is, I know I'm supposed to be writing and I've, I've been talking about that for years and that's what I tell people I do and I do. And not a day goes by that I don't write, either a journal or I'm le letter writing. So putting more discipline into that probably is a good idea if I'm thinking about a New Year's resolution, but doing it now, starting now. So there. <laughs> Wanna play ball? Okay. You have to let me get it though. Ugh, I was too slow. I have to get that ball from that dog. Focus on the light, which is the true meaning of the season. Recognizing the Christ light within you is a strong golden white light that protects, guides, and heals you. All right? <laughs>